King Jesus, King Jesus. Okay. Hey, I want to uh, read you this article. It's from uh, beforeitsnews.com. And this the story is attributed to Story Leak, the author. It was published on Wednesday, November 5th. And the article is entitled, Putin Defies the West, Leads the BRICS Alliance Away from the New World Order Reservation. Now I found this article very interesting. And it should enlighten a lot of folks about what's happening in the world today. And I hope that you will enjoy this as I have enjoyed it. I will parenthetically add my comments as we go. So it says here that Vladimir Putin's Russia, the perfect foil to the Anglo-American axis and their new world order. The secret history is revealed. Putin played a critical role in the pre-planned collapse of the USSR. It's about why the Anglo-American Axis is so afraid of Putin and determined to bring him down. It says no world leader has been so demonized by the West over the past decade as President Vladimir Putin of Russia has, nor the president or prime minister has been subjected to so many outrageous personal attacks and unrelenting false accusations. I beg to differ on that because I think Obama has been uh, charged with a lot of stuff and, and his wife also. It says clearly Vladimir Putin represents a genuine threat to the world shadow government or the WSG in a way that profoundly unnerves those who reside at the peak of the global power pyramid. Why are they so afraid of him? Before that question can be answered, the hidden history and the pre-planned collapse of the USSR must first be understood and properly considered. Only by understanding the true historical context in which Vladimir Putin operated at the time will his actions and pronouncements of today take on great meaning. This unknown history is also quite important if one is to comprehend the reactions of his, his countless detractors throughout the leadership of the Anglo-American Axis as follows. There was an ultra-secret deal made prior to the engineered collapse of the USSR following the fall of the Berlin Wall. One of the best kept secrets which predicated the inevitable collapse of Soviet communism and the subsequent breakup of the USSR is that it actually occurred in a manner not too unlike a carefully controlled demolition. Only in this case, they were bankers and politicians, investment brokers and power brokers who actually pressed the buttons. All of the plans toward that end were fastidiously laid out by these stakeholders, all of whom had the greatest interest and exploiting the vast wealth of the Russian motherland. The fall of the Berlin Wall and collapse of the USSR was not the spontaneous series of major events that the mainstream media would like us to believe. Neither was it the result of President Ronald Reagan's request, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Although his Hollywood background made for some great and convincing political theater. Perestroika and glasnost were simply buzzwords bandied about to present the appearance of a fundamental change to USSR. Yes, Russia did become liberalized, especially in contrast to Soviet communism, but only so it could be neoliberalized by the bankers or banksters 
In fact, the entire dissolution of the USSR was a product of numerous top secret meetings which took place with very high level, as in highest level, representatives of the USSR, the USA, the United Kingdom, and other major Anglo-American nations and the WSG controllers. By and large, the most important of these meetings concerned the meticulous engineered business and commercial banking and investment aspects necessary for an orderly breakup of the USSR republics and its Eastern European satellites. By 1989, the pendulum of power had swung from those who wished to see the USSR and her satellites controlled by the communist, by communism to those who wanted to directly control her prodigious natural wealth, industrial base, and other national assets by way of naked predatory capitalism. Toward that end, the many notorious Russian oligarchs were each selected and appointed by the Western coalition of bankers to oversee the outright theft of all major assets and natural resources from the Russian people. This unique form of corrupt predatory capitalism was at first hidden from public view as it was implemented to strip everything of value from both the state and the citizenry. This jointly blessed transitional process was the only way in which the Soviet Union was permitted to be liberated from those who secretly controlled her destiny throughout nearly 75 years of nominal Soviet communism. Leaders such as Mikhail Gorbachev and Boris Yeltsin were chosen to rubber stamp the entire state coordinated theft by the oligarchs. As political leaders are usually kept in the dark, neither of them nor their inner circles were privy to the details of this scheme to steal Russian wealth. They were merely front men whose primary task was to usher the process along with a veneer of legitimacy. However, because of their positions of political power and unique vantage points, both were grimly aware that a deal had been made with the devil behind their backs. Boris Yeltsin bore the greatest burden because of the timing of his term as president as he watched the oligarchs steal everything in sight. His well-known drinking problem and heart condition was surely the result of having to go along with the whole charade. Nevertheless, he knew that in the future stewardship of Vladimir Putin, Russia would be protected. For just as the vulture capitalists from both Russia and the West executed their plans and contracts to strip Russia bare, so too had an ultra secret group of Russian patriots and nationalists, loyal politicians, and government officials made an even stronger compact to take it all back when the right time presented itself. The CIA, the CIA, also known as the company, was directly involved in this con of the century. The following headlines portrays exactly what did not occur just prior to the fall of the Berlin, Berlin Wall and subsequent collapse of the Soviet Union. The director of the CIA admits that the CIA fell short in predicting the Soviet collapse in the New York Times. Can anyone believe that the CIA tried to present itself as having failed to predict this monumental unparalleled co collapse, particularly when it was the company that actually, that it, the company that was actually pulling the levers and pushing the buttons of what was essentially a controlled demolition. The CIA even went so far as to take a lot of bad press to convince the American public and the world at large that they had truly failed miserably in this regard. Such was their intent to hide the actual scheme perpetrated against the Russian people, as well as against all the former republics 
that made up the Soviet bloc, that the CIA was made the subject of various political dramas acted out all over the Washington, D.C. theater district in an effort to cover up any U.S. involvement. The company does, after all, bear the direct responsibility of seeing to it that all Anglo-American Axis international agreements are strictly adhered to. In reality, contract enforcement of this nature has always been the CIA's primary duty. In the instant case of Russia, however, their long-range assessment and strategic analysis fell way short of the mark. So mistaken were they that it can now be safely stated that it was really the CIA that ultimately got conned. Perhaps there was also those well positioned in the CIA, CIA whistleblowers who played the game so as to alert the Russian counterparts of the various schemes and scams being run from St. Petersburg to Gladivostok by the Western banksters. It should now be clear why all Russian oligarchs ran to London, Tel Aviv, and New York. What better way for the oligarchs to shield themselves from Russian indictments than to seek the full protection of the CIA, M16, and Mossad crime syndicates deep within the Anglo-American axis. Even the recently freed ex-president Mikhail Kordakovsky of the now defunct Yukos Oil has been spending more time in the good old USA stopping for the new Russian re revolution. The CIA's other Russian political plant, former world chess champion Gary Kasparov has also been working overtime to supplant Putin as protector of the realm as he preaches incessantly to the American political establishment about the grave danger of Putin's truly enlightened leadership. It seems that neither of these Western dupes understand that this is not 1917 and that Vladimir Putin is not Tsar Nicholas of Romanov fame. They also fail to realize that any of their fellow oligarchs abroad, as well as political pawns at home, have met with disastrous fates. Such are the forces from on high, which have aligned with Putin's master plan for a strong and sovereign Russia. Each one of the many oligarchs acting out of extreme self-interest as they have, cannot even hope to touch Putin now that the state power has been irreversibly consolidated to administer the Kremlin's will. The Ukraine, another CIA coordinated coup d'etat for the US and Israel. What is particularly surprising in view of the very dramatic and dynamic moves being played by the current global geopolitical chessboard is that the West is so transparent in regard to both their method and motive toward undermining Russia. The recent Kiev coup and ongoing Ukraine revolution provide a perfect example of yet another na nation collapse executed within the historical orbit of Russia. Here again, Zionist oligarchs with ties to the US, UK, and Israel have been appointed to all the key national leadership positions, as well as the governorships of all the regions known as oblasts. Once again, the Anglo-American Axis game plan has been executed according to the same playbook that was utilized during the USSR collapse, with the billionaire oligarchs taking total control of the wealth of Ukraine. Most do not know, but there is a plan afoot by the modern state of Israel to set up a return to its original homeland in the Ukraine. 
The eastern Ukraine was once a part of the kingdom of Khazaria during a time when Judaism was chosen by the king to become the official state religion. Those Khazarian adherents to the, Jude to the Judaism would go on to constitute what is now known as Ashkenazi Jewry. Over centuries of migration throughout Russia, as well as immigration to all parts of Eastern, Central, and Western Europe, the Ashkenazim have evolved into the richest and most politically powerful religious group in Eurasia. In fact, the modern state of Israel has formed, was formed by the Zionist movement which derived its power and wealth from Ashkenazi Jewry the world over. However, the modern state of Israel's experiment is not going well. Most of those Jews who immigrated from Russia and the Ukraine, as well as many who fled Europe during pre-World War II persecutions, post-World War II chaos, and right up to the present day instability, now understand they did, that they jumped right from the frying pan into the fire. Furthermore, many Jews have come to realize that the cultural PTSD generated by both World War I and World War II was purposefully inflicted so that they would be more amenable to taking up residence in a foreign patch of desert land surrounded by Muslims and Arab nations which were forced to watch the outright theft of Palestine in broad daylight from their brethren. Not a good way at all to move into the neighborhood, especially when the neighbors can very easily lob mortars and missile, missiles into your midst. This is where the plot to repopulate the Ukraine comes in. Most Israelis of European descent are naturally more comfortable on the continent, completely out of the range of such mortars and missiles attacks. Hence the Ukraine was chosen by the Zionist leadership as a new fallback position. Not only is the brazenly apartheid regime of the, northern, of the modern state of Israel untenable in any civilized world, it has shown itself to as a thoroughly rogue nation and criminal state that it is today. In fact, the modern state of Israel has ignominiously distinguished itself as an unprecedented and peerless international pariah, particularly in light of their recent destruction of Gaza, Israel has essentially sealed its fate. Consequently, the Middle East has morphed into a huge powder keg ready to blow whenever Israel decides to cross one too many red lines for the umpteenth time. Any normal person living in such a volatile environment would only want to far remove themselves from such a precarious state of affairs, which is why there is now a very quiet movement of Ashkenazi Jews back to the Ukraine, their ancestral homeland. The US-UK-EU-Ukraine coalition has telegraphed its misguided intentions from the start. From the very beginning of the manufactured civil war in the Ukraine, the Western powers have revealed their intentions of creating a new European Israel. Removing the Russian language and substituting Hebrew as the second official language of the Ukraine is just one quite obvious move towards the establishment of a new Israeli enclave. All the while the Anglo-Saxon, the Anglo-American Axis accuses Russia of having designs to create a new region, Nouveau Russia, known literally as New Russia. Such a red herring has accomplished the goal of not arousing suspicion as to the real plot to take over the Ukraine, just as Palestine was in the late 1940s. Furthermore, witness Israel's extraordinary 
silence regarding the whole Anglo-American Axis misadventure in the Ukraine before and during the ongoing fabricated civil war. Not only would such a European Israel provide a highly strategic geopolitical location from which to continue their efforts to destabilize Russia, the Anglo-American Axis would also use the Ukraine to run interference throughout the European Union, just as Israel has been used to disrupt the entire Middle East for decades, the new Ukraine state being constituted for Israeli resettlement will serve as a similar function throughout a Eurozone that is slowly becoming hostile to Jewish populations and their interests. When the neo-fascist leadership in Kiev turned the military loose on the urban and rural areas of eastern Ukraine, it became apparent that a much greater agenda of ethnic cleansing was at work. Many authoritative reports have indicated the wholesale slaughter of innocent civilians, as well as the wanton destruction of infrastructure, places of worship, homes, businesses of the Russian-speaking populace. Some have even insinuated that a slow motion plan of systematic genocide is at work. Old empires must die to make room for the real new world order. If the Anglo-American axis is distinguished by one pursuit above all, it is the unquenchable thirst for oil and natural gas. So addicted is the Anglo-American axis to hydrocarbon fuel that the petrodollar quickly became the world reserve currency. The strength of so much sustained worldwide demand for oil as an energy source has now reached a critical point, however. Both the Anglo-American Axis war machine and economic juggernaut require lots of oil and gas to run its tyranny across the planet. Not only is the Anglo-American Axis terribly wasteful and inefficient in the utilization of these energy resources, which Russia possesses in great abundance, it expends considerably amounts of time and energy, money and capital in the process of further acquisition of the hydrocarbons fuel needed to maintain sole superpower status. And herein lies the seeds of its own destruction, for the Anglo-American axis can no longer bear the cost necessary to maintain its empire. The extent to which war and other forms of conflict have been relied upon to secure additional sources of oil and gas no longer makes sense. All the nations which have walked down this path of perpetual war have been exposed. Some like Israel are now considered anathema to the vast majority of nations. Likewise, the U.S. is vilified all over the world as a bully bent on self-destruction, just as the U.K. is universally known by a City of London banksters, modus operandi. In light of these commonly held perceptions, the fortune and fate ratios of both the BRICS alliance and the Anglo-American access are soaring and plummeting respectively. While the European-American Japanese economic model continues to go bust in real time, the BRICS alliance is at the very least setting itself up for a future boom. Clearly, the trajectories of the BRICS nations are poised to shoot towards the stars. The Western powers are, are precariously plunging toward an unprecedented crash and burn. Ironically, it is only through the cooperation and collaboration with the BRICS allied nations and with especially Russia that the Eurozone and American sphere of influence can be saved from utmost certain economic collapse and financial breakdown. When the smoke and mirrors that define so much of the Western economic mirage begin to fade, Eurozone countries will profoundly regret imposing such counterproductive sanctions on Russia. It is they who now suffer tremendous economic consequences right in the middle of a resurgent recession from Russia's much more debilitating 
economic sanctions. Even the vaulted economic engine of Europe, Germany, has lost its capacity to jumpstart the rest of the EU, all because they chose to side with the real perpetrators of the Kiev coup d'etat. The battle for Ukraine is not so much about the Anglo-American axis's geopolitical gambit going wrong, as much as it is a litmus test for those who will be allowed to join an authentic global movement defined by economic justice, social equality, and political order. Furthermore, it is respect for national sovereignty, above all else, that Putin's Russia, Jinping's China, and Modi's India expect from the world, as the rest of the world ought to receive from all the BRICS nations. So enter Vladimir Putin, the perfect foil to the Anglo-American axis. First, it is critical to understand that it's not just Putin, the man, who they are afraid of. It is not even Russia as a nation that scares the living daylights out of the Anglo-American axis. It is the force behind Putin, which, may, which they have not seen occupy a major political office since John F. Kennedy. Truly the Anglo-American axis must wonder how they all got so tricked into believing that Putin was one of them in the first place. He was, after all, a KGB functionary with all the right credentials to be trusted to play their game, only their way all the time. However, just like JFK back in the early 60s, once Putin saw exactly how the Anglo-American Axis game was being played on the people everywhere, he flipped on them and has never looked back. Because his predecessor, Boris Yeltsin, who assisted the Russian oligarchs in the plundering, pillaging, and raping of the Russian motherland, gave his firm, firm blessing to Putin as political heir. No one ever thought Putin would perform such a radical 180 turnaround. In both the formulation of state policy and administration of the federal government, he set about the process of taking back Russia from those who misappropriated her wealth. So dramatic was his conversion against the rap rapacious oligarchy that he, he is now spoken of as a veritable reincarnation of Peter the Great, who also saved Russia from enemies from within and without. President Putin's close alignment with the patriarch of the Russian Orthodox Church, His Holiness Patriarch Kirill, has become a, the cause for the deeply re religious and traditional people of Russia to become enamored with him. His socially conservative agenda is much more in sync with Russian sensibilities as it is protective of a refined culture that is at odds with the permissiveness of an ever coarsening Western society. In this particular area of divergence, Putin's Russia has served as a countervailing force to the Anglo-American axis modus operandi of sowing seeds of social chaos and political disorder wherever they set their sights. It is significant to point out that the Russia that Yeltsin inherited was one that the thoroughly corrupt oligarchs were promised. In other words, the emancipation from communism only came with the understanding that the Russian oligarchs would be permitted to steal the nation's assets, the natural resources, industrial plants, and whatever else they could get their hands on. This little known fact is why Boris Yeltsin 
freely admitted at the end of his career to some historical mistakes, especially those related to the systematic transfer of Russian wealth to those now infamous oligarchs. He knew that it was the key to Russia's eventual freedom from those Western powers which were integral to orchestrating the fall of the Berlin Wall in a relatively orderly manner. History has now shown us that Boris Yeltsin had great foresight in his choice of Vladimir Putin as Prime Minister. His final words to Putin in his capacity as President were, quote, take care of Russia. They have likewise been translated as protect Russia. And Putin was the perfect vessel found to ensure that Boris Yeltsin's last wish would be honored. Putin himself uttered the following words a couple of days prior to Boris Yeltsin's funeral. We will do everything we can to ensure that the memory of Boris Nikolaevich Yeltsin, his noble thoughts and his words, take care of Russia, serve as a moral and political benchmark for us. Of course, doing so meant that the oligarchs either went to jail or into exile. That is what, that is what Vladimir Putin set about to do, regardless of Western reaction and or threat from all the usual suspects. Putin would not, under any circumstance, allow predatory capitalists to destroy Russia. He quite deliberately, under cover of national security, initiated all of the necessary legal processes and government procedures to reclaim that which had been stolen from the Russian people. This particular attack was especially effective and foolproof since the Anglo-American Axis has used the same pretext to take over nations large and small. Nevertheless, the West could only recall in utter shock that a president would actually protect his nation in this fashion. That Putin put the interests of Russia and its citizenry before the bankers and the industrialists and the powerful oligarchs was seen as the ultimate betrayal. After all, his actions ran counter to the backroom deal that was cut by the real power brokers who negotiated the fall of the wall. Communism was to be eradicated only if the oligarchs were granted unfettered access to Russia's wealth. And so they were for the time being. That should be a lesson to Americans that Putin has chosen the people over the corporate bankers and industrialists. And that's, that's where his power derives. Little did anyone know that Boris Yeltsin, and especially Vladimir Putin later on, tricked them all. Unfortunately, such a benevolent deception ultimately took a great toll on Yeltsin's health in the form of death by heart disease. As an extremely patriotic and self-sacrificing Russian leader, Boris Yeltsin knew that he had to play nice with the Western leaders and their oligarch agents if the nation was to be liberated from their predatory claws. In the end, he did a superlative job, particularly in ensuring a smooth transition to Putin upon whom fell the weight of the benign double cross. You see, the main reason Vladimir Putin is so despised by the Western powers is because he totally tricked them for the benefit of the Russian people. No one understands Russian history of the 20th century better than the justifiably resentful citizens of the USSR. These folks suffered great trials and tribulations at the hands of communist thugs who were put into power by Western bankers and the Anglo-American political class. 
they know exactly what happened to their motherland in the wake of the totally fraudulent Bolshevik revolution. They also know precisely who was responsible for such a catastrophic social, economic, and political cataclysm. See, Americans don't understand that because we've never had to lose a hundred million people as the Russians did during the Bolshevik time. We never lost our total leadership as the Russians did during the Bolshevik time. And it was all done by Jews. And the Jews are planning it now for America. If you look at the Georgia guys down there telling you that that's what they're gonna do. It has been said that the Russian steppes has borne many a philosopher. That great expanse of land runs on seemingly forever with wide open sky and unbroken winds that stir the soul. To know the truth and nothing but the truth. Only by understanding the temperament of those Russian people who lived through the disaster of communism, which was fostered on them by foreign agents with a surreptitious agenda, would the forces that stand behind Putin be properly understood? In this regard, it is not Putin the president that the Western powers are dealing with. It is a proud and patriotic Russian movement that sprang up with the awareness that the Anglo-American Axis was responsible for their lost century. This truth cannot be erased from history by airbrushing a few internet sites which are controlled by the CIA, nor can the many odious and therefore inconvenient historical facts be eradicated from the Russian psyche when so much pain and suffering was caused to so many. Truly the forces would support Putin in his quest for genuine national sovereignty are much greater than any US president or United Kingdom prime minister NATO Supreme Allied Commander or European Union leader. In fact, the power behind Vladimir Putin is Russia herself, a force quite determined not to be held prisoner by the Anglo-American Axis ever again, and no amount of saber rattling by Washington or economic terrorism by the European Union or financial threats from the city of London will alter that determination. You see, nuclear, nuclear weapons have a way of serving as the great equalizer. Unlike every other country that has recently fallen to naked Anglo-American aggression, Russia has substantially developed much nuclear weapon technology during the Cold War. Little did the West ever imagine that Russia would then use the prospect of not only nuclear weapon technology, but also far more advanced and destructive weaponry, which has never been utilized before on planet Earth as a powerful deterrent to unprovoked Anglo-American Axis acts of war nor did the same Western predatory capitalists ever dream that the richest man in Russia, Mikhail Khodorkovsky, would be in prison for 10 years. Him being their point man for the further looting of Russia's oil and gas reserves and related assets, the whole misguided Anglo-American Axis scheme went completely bust. However, once the oligarchs were stripped of their power, 
money and influence all the West could rely on was brute force as they continued to exercise with extraordinary savagery in places like the Ukraine to to intimidate and threaten, coerce and extort is all the Anglo-American Axis knows how to do these days. So successful have these taxes been in subjugating completely powerless and or defenseless nations around the world for many decades. Nevertheless, now the Russian Federation has reassessed their nuclear weapons capability and redeployed critical assets on their western border. Their tactical response and strategic preparedness have never been better. While this particular state of affairs posed a great obstacle to the Anglo-American Axis's long-range plan towards a new world order, Russia and the ever-growing BRICS alliance present an even greater challenge to their fatally flawed implementation plan. Because Russia's demand for respect of national sovereignty is representative of a much larger worldwide movement. Russia is not the only Russia is not only joined by the BRICS alliance in its effort to level the global playing field. It is also supported by many other nations near and far. Hungary being one that has broken ranks with the European Union. Certainly the broke and bankrupted Anglo-American axis has its job cut out when going up against a growing number of countries that will no longer be treated like stepchildren. When nations like China and Russia, India and Brazil, South Africa and Venezuela, Bolivia and Ecuador publicly express their misgivings with American hegemony, the whole world pays close attention. Therein lies the real power behind Vladimir Putin. History books will one day show that the world community of nations rallied around the high moral ground taken by Vladimir Putin in the second decade of the new millennium. Not only do Russian people fully support their president, but the vast populations of China, India, and many other nations stand solidly behind their leader against the incessant meddling by the Anglo-American axis. The pervasiveness of the internet has simply made it too easy to share what is really going on around the world, especially when the Anglo-American axis is working so vigorously against the interests of the common people everywhere. That's a major difference between uh, Putin and Obama. Putin has the support of his people. Racism prevent Obama from having support in the United States. It says, uh, Vladimir Putin, no matter what intrigues and machinations are set in motion to disrupt his best intention, has been found out by his own people. They know that he has done his level best to protect Russia. They also know that in his resolve to take care of the Russian people, he also considers the best interests of citizens of every nation, including those which relentlessly antagonize Russia and persecute him at every opportunity. This extraordinary posture is not only quite rare among world leaders today, it is an admirable quality in any age, which is just another reason why they so detest Vladimir Putin's wise and enlightened leadership. Boris Yeltsin's dying statement to take care of Russia literally became Putin's moral and political benchmark. Only by divine ordination does a KGB lieutenant colonel wind up fulfilling the last wish of his predecessor serving alternatively as both president and prime minister of Russia. Because Vladimir Putin took that presidential directive so seriously, he now sits in the crosshairs of the most formidable military machine and economic juggernaut on earth. However, in stark 
However, in stark contrast to John F. Kennedy's short tenure, which took place in the very belly of the beast, Putin has an unparalleled firewall of protection erected around him. Obama don't. He knew that if Boris Yeltsin's final wish was to be carried out, he and his collaborators would have to be protected from harm. The Anglo-American Axis team, after all, never plays nice and always breaks the rules. So in light of Putin's perceived reneging on a contract that was essentially agreed to by Yeltsin, there existed no moral imperative for him to abide by such an illegal and unethical agreement. On the very face of it, he could have been rightfully accused of treason of the highest order had he compi complied with the demands of the Anglo-American Axis. Only a trader would perform such an outrageous contract. So Putin, so Putin knew that both the law and the people would be on his side once he flipped on the oligarchs and their Western sponsors. Nevertheless, doing so has brought the wrath of the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers, the Council of Foreign Relations, and the Royal Institute of International Affairs, the Trilateral Commission, and the Bilderberg Group upon himself and Russia. Being the wise old soul that Putin is, he knew that his term of office would be the most consequential of the modern era for both Russia and the world at large. He has not shrunk from the demands of such a difficult undertaking. In fact, he seems to be emboldened by the formidable challenge that it is. But then he has the people of Russia firmly on his side, as well as the vast majority of nations on earth. When the people power around the planet start to coalesce around the true intention that Vladimir Putin represents and has frequently uttered, the change many wait for will come fast and furious. Truly, global transformation lies right around the corner. A new world order marked by implicit respect for both national and personal sovereignty. The future of the world lies with Russia. Through Russia, comes the hope of the world, not in respect to what is sometimes termed communism or Bolshevism, no, but freedom, freedom, that each man will live for his fellow man. The principle has been born there. It will take years for it to crystallize. Yet out of Russia comes again the hope of the world, quote by Edgar Casey. Clearly, this prophetic utterance by Edgar Casey is both prescient and perceptive. For not only have the steps of Central Asia forged the hearts and minds of the Russian people over centuries, the tyranny of Soviet communism proved to be a crucible like no other. Russia was all, has always been a nation of philosophers with writers like Tolstoy and, and Dostoyevich. Dostoyevsky, molding the national consciousness since the 19th century. Given their relatively recent release, from the imposed atheism of godless Marxism, Russians young and old have reimbursed the mystical traditions of the Russian Orthodox Church. Given this very profound and ongoing cultural transformation, a new national mindset is emerging. Undoubtedly, it is one that is bending inexorably 
toward a more conservative and traditional society, especially one that is moving in the opposite direction of Western societies. Putin is well aware of the sensibilities which predominate through, throughout the Russian motherland. He seeks to offend no one, but at the same time will not let the crazies run the asylum as they do throughout the Anglo-American axis, nor will he permit the values and principles, customs and traditions of any minorities dominate Russian culture. So God Zionism is dominating the U.S., promoting homosexuality and abortion and all kind of uh, uh, unnatural morality. And uh, Russia's, Russia's going in the completely opposite direction. We're the godless country and Russia is the God-fearing country. What a turn of events. In light of what is at stake for both Putin's Russia and Obama's USA, it is now apparent that an epic battle has been raging across the land. The most recent battle in the Ukraine is only one more among those being waged throughout the entire Middle East and beyond. Both Russia and China have seen their geopolitical positions assaulted and undermine wherever they attempt to establish new markets or engage trading partners. Like, like in Africa, where when the Chinese went in to, re, to build the infrastructure of Africa, all of a sudden now they infect the people with Ebola and send troops over there instead of cures, pretexts. Particularly when energy resources are at stake, the wars have become more apocalyptic, so much so that many wonder if an epoch ending World War III is around the corner. However, such an engineered Armageddon can only be fostered on the community of nations with the participation of both East and West. Fortunately, Putin's Russia will not be goaded into a World War III scenario. Neither will Jinping's China nor India's Modi. Because of Putin's unshakable resolve and strong leadership within the BRICS alliance, none of the nations being routinely assailed by the Anglo-American axis will be triggered into full-scale war. The whole world has Vladimir Putin to thank for his sane and sober response to so many conflicts and skirmishes, false flag attacks, and proxy invasions being staged across the planet on a weekly basis by the Anglo-American Axis. The Russian people have come to respect Putin as a leader who is fiercely protective of the Russian motherland. Comparisons to Peter the Great, who has been praised as an industrializer and cultural visionary who turned his country into a European power, are quite understandable. Under the stewardship of Tsar Peter I, Russia became feared but also respected by his neighbors, and he is the official Tsar hero of Russian history. Perhaps the following picture, disseminated by the Anglo-American mainstream media is a, as a put down, does reflect Putin in his current role as protector of Russia and the moral leader of the free world. Authors note November 5th, 2014. There is a massive amount of false information being spread across cyberspace regarding Vladimir Putin. One of the primary disinfo campaigns is to link him to a, the very oligarchs who still remain in position of power in Russia. 
Putin inherit an unprecedented economic mess and financial disaster from decades of communist mismanagement. He was also forced to deal with pervasive political problems and endemic government corruption from the same era. All the while, he had to steer the country through a major social, philosophical, and religious transformation. In view of this context, is it not clear that he had to initially make as many friends as possible before all the purges began? Given these realities, Putin did what any righteous and pragmatic leader would do, usher the process along in as smooth and painless a way as possible. The vast majority of Russians have already suffered terribly for many decades. Therefore, he has always tried to work with those who have been cooperative. Some of the oligarchs saw the writing on the wall and made the overtures necessary to convince Putin of their loyalty to rebuilding Russia first. Those that left the Russian motherland would not renounce their thieving ways. Those who have stayed are much more aligned with Putin's program than their previous affiliation and behavior might indicate. When faced with either being exiled or joining the cause, it became a fairly easy decision for those oligarchs who valued their Russian roots. Then there is the matter which concerns those who assert that Putin must be in bed with the Rothschilds, the Western elite, the New World Order, the Illuminati, the, new sh the, the world shadow government, the Fed, banksters, etc. As the president and prime minister of a once superpower nation, how could he possibly terminate all the normal international relationships in the midst of rebuilding the nation. It was only through the vital trade and commerce with Europe, as well as satisfying the energy demands of those in other countries that Russia had the cash flow to survive the whole ordeal. So much of the Russian economy was and is driven by oil and gas revenues a reality that Russia would have to face sooner or later. For the sake of survival, deals were made whenever, wherever, and with whomever necessary. Lastly, there are those who declare that Putin is unwillingly being used as controlled opposition. Do they really think that Putin is not aware of the many games being played by the Anglo-American Axis vast network of intelligence services. He was KGB, doing a heck of a lot more than the mainstream media would ever acknowledge. His involvement at the highest levels of playing the now ubiquitous great game gave him an education that only the Committee for State Security could provide. In fact, only the invaluable experience accrued within Russia's primary security agencies and he was also appointed head of the FSB, could adequately prepare him for his future challenges. Therefore, when many ask how an ex-KGB officer can possibly do good, we wonder how Putin could have transformed the Herc performed the Herculean task of a successful national rehabilitation since 1999 without being purged or assassinated.